Hey everybody, I am coming making this video message and I want to let you all know you have to be very careful who you accept information from or who you accept an opinion from. And the reason why I'm making this video message is because there is somebody or various people that we hold to a very high regard that is in our lives. They may be closely in contact with us or there may be people who are not necessarily directly connected to us but on the outskirts of our friendships we have people that we respect um we um accept their opinion and their suggestions because we look at their lives or their life we look at how maybe you respect how they've raised their children or how they are raising their children maybe you respect the type of leader they are maybe somebody you know in the kingdom of god when it comes to ministry work they are very very good at being a leader they are a great leader they care about the people for real they love the people for real they believe in giving back to the community they want the best for people and we have people within our family that we look to that we trust and that we even may respect because of how they carry themselves or because of how they conduct family issues and situations that come up however i want you all to be very well aware of the people that you accept their opinion and you accept their suggestions but you don't know their heart posture and let me just explain that and break that down see it's easy for any one of us to go and vent to somebody we can just pick any random person and vent to them and tell them about an issue that we're having with someone else or with the situation going on in our life but if that person and this is going to require you to have a certain level of discernment you are going to have to have a prayer life and a connection to God because ultimately God is the one who protects all of us so let me throw that out there but you still need to be connected to God and talking to God and letting God know and even asking God look God, I want you to send me people that love me for real. I want you to send me people that have my best interests at heart. I want you to send people in my life that care about me and they care about my well-being. Even if I make a mistake or I make the wrong decision or a bad decision, if they pass their opinion to me or they give me a suggestion, I want it to come from a pure place in their heart. That is so critical because if you get somebody who is a rebellious person, if you get somebody who does not know about patience, if you get someone who does not respect leadership, they don't respect their boss at work, they don't respect the feelings of other people, it's all about them. The world revolves around them. If you are not doing what they want you to do, they don't respect it. They don't respect you. And so it's nothing for somebody with those qualities and characteristics within them to give you bad advice and give you a bad, horrible opinion of what they feel you should do in your situation. Because if the wrong person gives you a certain kind of information or they pass an opinion to you, it can lead you to self-destruction it can lead you down a road of ruin it can lead you down a road where you become rebellious and if you are in a state of rebellion and if you are offended it stagnates your growth it uh leaves you at a place where opportunities that can be life-changing for you they won't come to you because you feel like you know it all you feel like the way that you're operating, you making these decisions all on your own. You're an island by yourself. You feel like nobody else can tell you anything because your way and your method, uh, as far as doing things, it is the only right way. So I just wanted to tell you all in this video message, be careful with receiving information and the opinions of the wrong people. It is nothing wrong with you seeking wise counsel. That's actually Bible. The word of God actually tells us to seek 
wise counsel. And don't get caught up in who the person is because I've talked about this with you guys before. The world will tell you, don't take advice from a single woman. That's not biblical. If there is a single woman with a good head on her shoulders and she's intelligent and that single woman is locked into God and the spirit of the living God is in that woman and that woman knows how to carry herself and her actual life is not full of chaos and confusion and drama and she knows what she's talking about, you very well can take advice from a single woman. Don't listen to people tell you, don't take advice from anybody who... um has never been married. It, it's, it's just not true. There are many people out here, I am a divorced person, and they can give you, or we can give you sound advice. Because you guys have got to understand, if somebody has been somewhere that you've never been, and they failed at something that you have never even experienced at all, they very well can give you advice. They can tell you certain things that you should not do because they don't want you to make the mistakes that they've made. And so I'm saying all that to say, it does not matter how somebody looks. It does not matter what age somebody is because there's something else that the world does. They impress upon society that advice, suggestions, and opinion, it does not matter if it's coming from someone who is younger than you. Are you kidding me? There are younger people who are highly intelligent very responsible and they have a very strong relationship with Christ and they I've been around people younger than me and they give very very good advice and they know they have a very um they they're insightful I should say they have insight on certain things it's coming from the Holy Spirit and they will pass their opinion or they will make a suggestion and tell you I think you should go this route ma'am sir brother sister however they call you or address you and so don't get caught up in that but i'm saying if you know somebody is the type of man or you know somebody is the type of woman they live in chaos every area of their life is chaotic their relationship is full of drama and chaos they're always arguing and fighting with their spouse or with their boyfriend or girlfriend. They always getting into it with bosses at work. They always getting into it with family members. They always falling out with friends. You might probably want to think twice. Now, I'm not saying a person in that state still cannot give you advice. That's not what I'm saying. But typically, when you see a pattern or a progression of a certain person that you're confiding in and trusting to tell them about what you're going through when you see a um a, a cycle of them always falling out with people they are always at odds with every person in their life like i said friends family leadership at church bosses at work they're falling out with friends they're falling out um with people that they say that they love and respect they cannot be corrected they cannot be uh criticized you know in a constructive manner things of that nature you might want to think twice before taking advice from that type of person because they are going to pass their opinion and give you advice from the toxicity in their heart posture I'm sure you all have come across somebody where they are the type of person they don't feel that a boss can tell them anything because they look at them as, okay, you're just a boss, but you're not my father. Have you ever worked with somebody like that where the boss would give all of the employees a direct instruction of what they should and shouldn't be doing, but it'll be that one coworker or maybe a few of them. They'll feel like, well, I don't have to do what he says. I don't have to do what she says. He's not my father. She's not my mother. I'm going to use the method that I've been using because when I worked other jobs, I did it this way and it worked. And so if you listen to that, it may lead you to get rolled up. It may lead you to get suspended. It may lead you to get fired. And so if you get rolled up and that's put in your work file, when you go to another job, a lot of this stuff, it follows you. This is why jobs ask you, for references they ask you to put people who are not related to you sometimes or who is not a friend 
they want a character letter sometimes they want their phone number because they want to call them and ask them the type of person that you are they want to be able to call your old job and talk to your boss or the last two jobs you worked before you worked at this current job and they want to just talk to them to ask them hey what is his or her temperament what's their attitude that they come to work late that they come to work on time how did they treat their co-workers how did they treat you how did they talk to you were they disobedient were they disrespectful they ask these questions and so don't always be quick to just go to anybody you all have got to use a lot of wisdom um especially in the season that we're in now because there are so many people who are displaced spiritually and when I say this place, they are not in the place that they should be spiritually because they have personal things going on in their lives. They are sick. They have trauma that they have not healed. They are not seeing a therapist about it. They um, are going through things in their relationships and marriage. And so if you are confiding in them and going to them, they may speak to you through an offended heart they may speak to you through a tainted spirit so today i want you all to know just be careful who you share certain things with because you'll listen to people telling you if i was you i would do this if i was you i would do that oh she couldn't have did that to me he couldn't have did that to me. Oh, they got the right one. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. Why are you waiting for them? You already been waiting for five or ten years. Why are you going to wait longer? Yeah, your bishop at church told you that he wasn't going to do this. But what did God tell you? You know, now some things, some things. Let me just address this spiritual matter. Because now I'm going into a more of a spiritual matter. If you are a person who is a congregant at a church... And you know that God has called you to prophesy. God has called you to preach. God has called you to be a musician. God has called you to be a seer. God has called you to be an oracle or a minister or a deacon or deaconess. Whatever your gift is, you may have three or four of those gifts operating at one time. That's another conversation. But if your bishop or your apostle or your um, pastor tells you, no, I think you should sit under the word longer. You have to be more mature. You have to read more. You have to grow more. I want you to iron out some things mentally and emotionally that I'm discerning you're going through. You are not equipped to go out here and build your own ministry yet, son, daughter. You are not equipped now to go out here and teach and preach. You are not equipped. Your gift has not been cultivated yet. It's not mature. You don't have any business going out here prophesying and laying hands on anybody and if you defy that because you're angry about that and you go and share that with different friends and family members and they don't have the right heart posture they are rebellious they operate in disrespect they are divisive they come with a spirit of division they could care less about telling you to not listen to what your bishop said They'll just come from an angle of, well, I know you and I know you're anointed and I know you're gifted and I know all the work you put in ministry for the past 10 or 15 years. Why does he or she in leadership, <clears throat> excuse me, why do they keep having you wait? You need to go out here and just do what God told you. And God probably did tell you certain things, but God didn't tell you to jump out there and move and start doing certain things just yet. Sometimes God will drop a nugget in us or God will give us a dream or he will give us a vision and God will tell us, okay, I've called you to be a prophet. I have called you to sing. I have called you to be a writer. I have called you to be an armor bearer for my, for, I'm sorry, for my son or for my daughter. Yes, God may tell you that, but then you have to continue to go to God and pray about that because there may be further instructions that God is going to give you. God is not just going to outright come and tell you something. Oh, I'm calling you to be a prophet. And then boom, you get up and you go out here and you start prophesying. That's not how this works. God is not going to come and tell you, oh, you're a seer. And so every dream you have, 
or every vision that you have, that means that it's correct, it's pure, it's on point, and it's coming from the spirit of the living God. You all have got to understand that every dream and every vision that you see, sometimes it may not always come from Jesus Christ. Sometimes it may not be pure. The more you're praying, the more you're reading your word, the more you're fasting, the more you're sitting in silence with God, God will actually start bringing things up in your spirit that are not useful for you or the kingdom. God will show you you. God will show you your attitude. He will show you your bad thoughts. He will show you your temper. He will show you how you acted in the last season and that's how it has led you to the season you're in now and you still are not producing or what you are producing it is not bringing restoration and healing and change and deliverance to other people you all have got to understand this this is why we see a lot of people um they get exposed as far as being false teachers, as far as being false prophets, as far as not being in the right position they're supposed to be in, as far as who God has called them to be. See, sometimes it's not even that that person really was not called to be a teacher or an oracle or a um, minister or a pastor or a prophet it may just be that they really did initially in the beginning they did hear the voice of god tell them who he's called them to be in the kingdom but they didn't wait long enough for more instructions from god they did not sit and wait more and longer for god to give them more information as far as what they needed to do or what was required of them before they went out here operating in that gift this is why it's critical that you are very mindful of who it is you are confiding in i myself have gone to the wrong people and when you go to certain friends you automatically just trust them because this is my friend. I've been knowing them and I've been friends with them for 20 plus years. Why would they steer me wrong? And I'm not saying that a friend will intentionally steer you wrong, but if they are a certain type of person, they may not be um, the type of person who is naturally inclined to respect leadership they may not be passionate about their relationship with God like you are and so it's nothing for them to tell you something that surface there's nothing for them to tell you something that you can act out on real quick it's nothing for them to tell you that and so you listen to that because you have put full trust in the opinion and the suggestions of your friends or certain family members or certain acquaintances and you stop being locked in with God so now you on this road and you're dizzy and you're going in circles and you're confused and people are not respecting what it is you're coming with as far as your gift goes watch who you're talking to Watch who you're listening to. Be mindful. Be very mindful of the information you're receiving from certain people. But again, don't look at somebody's age. Don't look at somebody's race. Don't look at somebody's background. Because wisdom can be given to anybody. A homeless person can give you wisdom. Somebody who struggles with alcohol or drinking can give you wisdom. Give people more grace. Give them more mercy. I've seen people that have a drug problem or they have an alcohol problem, but they've given me sound advice, okay, and very good 
potent and sage information and wisdom but somebody who's not even a drunkard they're not a drug addict they've told me something that almost made me go down a road of destruction because their heart posture was not right they were not mature in spiritual matters they were not mature in relationships as far as how you treat people in all types of relationships that you have with friends with family with co-workers with leadership with with with, think, with people of that nature they were not mature in that some people they go out here just blind and they live life on their own terms and they think they right in everything that they say they're not humble enough to say i made a mistake i gave out the wrong info I apologize. Everybody is not like that. And so what I'm saying is that go back to the word of God. And the word of God says, seek wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. Look at how that person conducts themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at their attitude. What is their mentality? What is their overall mindset? How do they treat the people in their life? And then that should tell you enough. And if you have the gift of discernment or the spirit of discernment, that should tell you, okay, you know what? I can trust listening to this person. But if they full of rebellion and they're immorally bankrupt, they have no standards, they have no values. They're married, but they don't even respect to listen to something their spouse tells them. How are they going to come and tell you something? It's just something that you all learn. We all have to learn this and we all have to master this. That's the video message. Well, guys, it's time for me to go because I have some other things to do. The Lord will and I will be back with another video message. If any one of you have taken offense to anything I spoke about in this video message, it's okay. That's all right. I'm not worried about it. I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning.